All right, Kevin. Um, what hey, do you say? How are you? Are you okay? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> I mean, no, but you know, I'm happy to be here. No one, isn't that funny? Like when you ask a comic, like, how are you doing? You're hoping they just say fine because it's such yeah. a loaded question. You Absolutely. Know? And I think, uh, yeah. So when I say, and do you also get, uh, occasionally I'll say fine and people will be like, just fine. And I'm like, man, fine is good. Fine right. is like, Fine is pretty yeah. close to the ceiling here. Let's just leave it. If I can operate every day of my life at fine, we're, we're going to be all right. You know, mm -hmm. like Absolutely. fine, <laughs> fine is really what we're trying to achieve. And yes. uh, yeah, I feel like comics were always just one or two days away from like not a complete breakdown, but just maybe like. I don't have like big sort of colossal breakdowns anymore as a comic where it's like, what am I doing? This is, you know, mm -hmm. I sort of have like eight minute episodes, you know, where like I'll be walking to the grocery store and it'll be like, man, I don't know. Is the guy that's delivering the eggs to the grocery store, does he have it all figured out? Like I look at that oh, yeah, guy sure. and go, and by the time I walk home, you know, something else has caught my attention. Yeah, you've got quibby length breakdowns at this point. Just real, yes. uh, real mini, mini webisode length uh, breakdowns. Yeah, I, I, I definitely remember being at a point where I like I was walking to the grocery store and thought, should would it be financially smart to actually buy a lottery ticket at this point? Like, would right. it be the prudent move? Should I be doing that? Would that be better than literally everything else I'm choosing to do with my time yeah. in exchange for things, you know? Yeah. Comics are always trying to find a thing to sort of buy their time or interest or they're, they're always looking for like a plan to get mm -hmm. until the next one. It's like, well, I just do this for a year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I just do this one thing for a year by then, you know, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll know one way or the other. And then, yeah, you know, exactly. What when's the last time you feel like you've post show you ever get the like real post show blues? You know what I mean? Where you're mm -hmm. just like, oh, boy, this is going to take a while to <laughs> kick out of this. You know, when's, when's the last time you had that? Oh, that's a that's a good question. I I mean, probably I would say I was doing shows I was doing shows at a club I like very much. I was doing shows at uh, at Zanies, not uh, the Zanies Rosemont. So it's uh -huh. in the Chicago area. It's not like the one in the city in the city, which which I love, love. It's this other one that's also very nice. And I had like the first show of the week was great and the uh, great like all newish stuff, like really fun. Uh, second show, second and third shows were. I would say like good to very good. And then the first show on Saturday was just like, I mean, like no one left sad, but it felt like just a B minus C plus kind of like a nothingness. And then the last show of the week was great. So I, but it was a club that was like, this is a good club. And in the midst of a week where I really crushed at the beginning and at the end, I just had like dropped an absolute average bomb on everybody. And right. it was, I feel like that was, that gave me blues enough to be like, is there literally an inch of progress in my fucking life here? Is there like, am I, it, it, I am 39 years old. I've been doing stand up for a while. I think I have ability, but it's like, this is too average to be at this time of my life. I felt like that's, that's quite a crisis to have. Yeah. Um, it's not about like it. I hadn't bombed. It was just right. like, this wasn't, this isn't good enough, which is, Oh boy, my life writ large, you know, you know, that's almost worse because so the bomb is like sometimes they're so colossal where you go well i mean hey that's that just that doesn't happen all the time right and if this is just something for the books we'll remember this uh but the average thing the feeling of like sort of like a c level performance you're mm. like uh-oh like how did that sneak yeah. in there you know oh yeah just being a fucking nothing is right. the is the worst thing because a bomb is interesting at least you know yes. <laughs> like, right yeah yeah at least you have a story to tell your friends mm -hmm. you know like absolutely you get something out of it what uh and, and it's it's so hard like you know you're like you're in chicago at, at rosemont like 
it's so hard when you're away from everything and everybody. And then I'm assuming you then what get in a Uber or that someone from the club. I always like when they make like the host drive you home. Oh yeah. You know, and it's like this poor kid that doesn't want to, <laughs> you know, they don't want to be, they don't want to do this, you know, sure. like you're like, Hey, do you want to get like Taco Bell or something? Like Taco- <laughs> I got a, I got friends, dude. I have yeah. friends. I don't want to hang out with you. And yeah. then you just go back to like a condo or hotel and sit in it all night. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that can be not fun. In this case, this, I'm from Chicago originally. So this is one where it was like, I was staying at my mom's house. So that was my condo for this, uh, for this time, which yeah. is also, you know, I mean, that's, I, I like my mom's house, but it's not, you don't feel like showbiz really. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> in that that's plan. always the toughest when you, you hit the club up and they go, you go like, Hey, and I have a place to stay. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, yeah. here's one more reason why you won't have to pay me as much. And I'm willing to do this, you know, like, right. Don't worry, I've got a couch I can crash on. That's your cell. Instead of credits yeah. now, I'm just listed, listing all the places I know people that can stay. Yeah, you I'd know. like to be a write-off for your business, basically, right. in any way yeah. I could. So, yeah. you know. I'm hoping this will be a wash of a weekend. Like when I yeah. give my, you know, papers over to the accountant, they go, "Did so you did nothing this year? Is that what happened? Mm-hmm. You did. <laughs> and then you got it, dude. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah basically. Yeah, exactly. I did nothing basically. in 23 states this year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, you know, it, it's, you, you've done something that is now no longer attainable. And I think it was such a crown jewel, uh, for so many comics, you did Letterman, you mm-hmm. know, and did you have, I feel like when, when I, I, you know, I've never done anything like that, but I feel like leading up to a big show, I sort of go through a thing of like, I take to the set to the point where it's, it's, it starts to be so work that it does that it stops working like in a club yeah did you feel that at all going into it were you nervous because of that feeling you know i it was i had a i had a little bit of that ramping up to it but they used to do a thing where they would uh they would take you you would go to caroline's the night before the show and you would Mm -hmm. do it sort of a final time in front of them and the stand-up booker would be with you just kind of like to time it and see it and then after i did it they said, uh, you know, they said that timed out great. So when you're up there, don't worry, we're not going to give you the light. Just do these jokes in whatever pace it feels right. And that's, that's fine. We've timed it out great. So that was nice. And I think like it had gotten stale for me in that way. And I'm just the kind of comic I am. I typically know what I'm doing first. I know what I'm doing last, like in a headline set. Uh, I I know what I'm going to open, the chunk I'm going to open with, the chunk I'm going to close with, but like the middle shifts around a lot sort of on the fly. So doing these late night kinds of sets where it is just like, you know, the order going in, it's just, it's more a recitation of material than it is Mm -hmm. performing standup really. Right. And I think what was nice, the Caroline's thing, it was a very like touristy packed room and it worked very well. So in my head, I was like, all right, I'm like sending this bit off to these bits off to retirement tomorrow and it'll be nice. So I think that was like a thing that helped me that way. I mean, I definitely had the, I think in my head, I was like not nervous day of because I thought in the story of my life, this has to go well. Otherwise I I'm walking into the woods. Like this can't, I couldn't have gotten this thing I always wanted to do and had it go badly. Cause then yeah. that's all my life is about. So I woke up sort of like not nervous for that reason, I would say. Yeah, you almost get to the point where you're like, this is the one thing I am confident in is that I can do these, you know, everything else is a mess, but this Mm. five minutes is so rehearsed that like, it's it it does become bulletproof essentially you know it does yeah the beats do but you definitely what you're saying is a million percent true and i think it, uh, comics know this where it can lose the energy unless you're just like a real straight up joke joke guy and you find joy i guess like in the jokiness itself of the thing mm-hmm. i definitely am someone who has trouble keeping the life in the bit if mm-hmm. it's if it's been really pounded in you know yeah yeah yeah. And, and the audience senses that I feel like, like yeah. you know, it's so I, I feel like the, the thing that comics struggle with, I know I struggle with it all the time more than anything else is just trying to like be present. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. On stage and stay in the moment, because there is something about like when you start thinking about, well, OK, what's next and what's after this? And do they like that. Do they not like that? That person's like you start to think all those things and 
you just feel like you're doing the same jokes. The words are the same, but mm -hmm. something has changed and the audience feels it. You know, what, what do you do? What do you do to stay sort of in that moment? I mean, I think that's part of why, like, I ha found a note in my phone. Uh, it was just in the notes app. And this is just like, I think a sign of depression, but it just said, have fun, like in my yeah. to-do list, right. uh, basically just like consider. And it wasn't about comedy. I think it was just about life. It was just like, I, you know, maybe I had a good time once and I was like, remember to, you know, you're allowed to and try to have fun. But like, I think anytime you can it sounds like such nothing advice but like I will try to remind myself on stage sometimes to like have fun enjoy telling this you have to I think like there's a personality type that is probably ideal for stand-up performance which is not exactly mine where mm -hmm. it people who the person who cannot wait to tell you their bit or their story no matter what it is whether it's good or bad at all times if they can't wait if they're excited about what they're saying it's going to come off better and me if the audience is like, if I'm frequently, I'm just, if I, I'm not excited to tell people everything, you know, I want the thing to be better. And when it's new, I'm, I'm excited about it. When I really believe in it, I'm excited about it. And there's a couple of like older bits that I can still tell because they're true and fun. And, you know, the audience reaction changes it a little bit, but, um, but yeah, I'm not someone who can really like get joy out of the same like tight joke over and over again, you know? Right. Yeah. There's something about, I feel like there's something sort of fun for the audience and for the performer, the, the comic that like you do basically the same set, but there are maybe just, there's something you say a little bit different or you do a different mm -hmm. tag. And there's just something fun of like, Oh, well you, you had to see that live. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you couldn't have seen that in another show because it only happened tonight, you know? So. Yeah. Oh, and I think if you react to something in the moment and it and it kills and you reacted in a genuine way, which usually you will, because that's instinct, that's not, you know, that's not pre-written. I think that mm -hmm. makes whatever you're doing after that better for me. Yeah. Like if if some like in the moment riff goes well, that's me being me. That's then that gets me out of my like the joke recitation, the bit like just presentation of the bits I've thought of that gets me back more into like Kevin talking like Kevin, which works better, you know. Right, right. You you do something like Letterman. It's such a big opportunity for a comic. It's what we all, you know, I, for me, I feel like there are, there are lots of comics that came from the school of like watching Letterman, watching Leno, you know, watching clips from Carson and stuff like that. And you're like, Oh, this is why I get into this. You know what I mean? So there is mm -hmm. a moment in your career where you go, this happened and it happened the right way. And everything was great. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any moments that you thought were going to be that, that you thought were <laughs> going to be your letterman and they ended up not happening? I mean, there was, there was nothing that I, th I don't think there's anything I've experienced that I thought was going to be my letterman, like a letterman level thing and didn't, but they're like one of the two worst bombs of my life was at a show in LA and it was my first trip to LA and it was so it was a thing where it's like, I don't know, maybe, you know, this is like this is like a show where it seems like a lot of people are going to be. And I've never done stand up in Los Angeles this is in 2011. So I had been doing stand up for like, I don't know, three, four years, basically, mm -hmm. at that point. And it was the National Lampoon Twitter Award Show and nationally and so i don't i i guess i had like a tweet blow up and that's how i got invited to this thing and it was at the west hollywood improv and i did a show right before it that same night at uh, i was at a bar called bar lubitsch which had very very cool fun alt shows there a great show called the josh and josh show and i went like in between mark Marin and sarah silverman on that show and it and it went great and it was like really nice mark just said nice things in passing and you know at this time i'm like i'm 28 or whatever and it's like this is and this is all very exciting and then sarah silverman said very nice things and i had seen sarah listed on the the lineup for the the, the national lampoon thing at the west hollywood improv and i was like yeah, and uh, well, great to meet you, and uh, thanks so much. And I guess I'll see you in a few minutes, right? And she was like, "I'm not, that's going to be a fucking mess. I'm not, I'm not going to that." And I thought, like, okay, hey, I'm sure it'll be fine, whatever. And I went, and I was the first comic who went up. Eddie Pepitone was hosting, and apparently, what it was, the whole audience was people who were like Twitter people, like Twitter famous people. 
nominated for various things. And there was only a couple stand-up comics going up. And no, no one knew this was happening until I went up. I went up, they put a screen behind you and people were tweeting about you live behind you while you were on stage. So I did five minutes and it was basically my Letterman set that I did. And the first joke killed, last joke killed. The middle of only five minutes was so bad. I went home and could not drink. Like I'm a big drinker. I could not summon the spiritual e energy to unscrew the cap on the Jack Daniels at my friend's West Hollywood uh, apartment. The first uh, tweet that came up behind me uh, before I said a joke, uh, I was clean shaven at the time and uh, someone just wrote bomb Hanks because people think I look like Tom Hanks or they when I was clean shaven, they would. So the first person wrote bomb Hanks and I hadn't said a fucking joke yet. And, you know, then people aren't listening to your shit. They're just watching what they are. These bunch of Twitter jerk offs are saying during your set behind you. And I didn't even know that was happening because it wasn't going on when Pepitone was on. Um, but then people saw and it went for the rest of the night. So I thought it was going to be my big like, hey, get in in L.A. and had a great first experience. And then that. Dude, that is awful. What an awful idea for a show. Terrible. Like an obviously not set up by comics, you know, no. like there's no comics in the room that go, hey, this is this is the this is like having a TV on in a bar. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, 100 like, percent. And everyone literally everyone is on their phones. Right. Trying to get on the screen behind you, too. And like trend tweet about it, whatever. And yeah. And it was mostly all just like, you know, like I said, like Twitter famous, quote unquote, people at the time but uh there is like there there definitely was one person who considered herself a comedian who tweeted something that i never for, i will never forget or forgive so it's like not even what she said so much but just that she was involved in this kind of thing i right. was like oh no respect from here on from here on forward so how long did it take you to sort of move were you next day you were feeling better or were you did you carry this i mean you obviously you remember it you know oh i remember it and now i'm glad it it happened because it's not like yeah. it's not like if I really nailed the middle middle three minutes of that five I was getting a sitcom from Danny Zucker and the you know mm -hmm. like that that wasn't going that there was no functionally there was no upside that was going to come from this anyway that I would have felt in any way uh, besides just like having a nice set I guess which I certainly did not but like yeah two people from like my college who I started a tv show in college that's still going on and that's how I met my wife and my best friends like two of those people who came generations after came to see me at that show in LA so it's like I felt awful because of that like that that's the way they they saw me um so yeah I was definitely bummed I mean it was it was like it just it's that dirty feeling that I think you right. referenced earlier where it's just like you can't shower it off for, uh, yeah. for a couple of days you know that's that's tough and it's tough because that three to four year mark especially because so did you do Letterman before before or after this after this so I did Letterman uh Thanksgiving 2013 okay so you're in sort of that thing and you kill the night before it's just like it is the yeah, comedy universe before. setting yeah. you up, you know? Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. The, the, you're, you're the show before, you know, yeah. where that three to four year mark, I feel like is when you go, Oh, I'm, I'm good at this. You know? And oh, I mean, absolutely. Like, totally. When you're getting on, like you're getting on the cool alt shows, the cool indie shows and your friends are good. Like the, the guys who were at the guys and gals who were at the first mics you did, who were like, Oh, these guys seem sane and good yeah. and you're all starting to get booked in the cooler places and you're like yeah this is this is a trajectory that seems to be uh you know a hypotenuse like straight line just going straight up and then as soon it is a, a curse of comedy that as soon as you think i got it then something horrific happens typically right yeah it, it really and it happens everywhere like it happens in comedy outside of comedy i feel like where like it just goes, the universe just goes, well, we'll see what we can throw at you. And mm -hmm. if you're here in six months, you know, <laughs> yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait to see like what, uh, so what do you do to get out of those kind of head spaces? You know, I know you said you, you like to you ha like to have a couple cocktails. Is that usually sure. a move <laughs> or, or do you do anything sort of like therapeutic or habitual or anything like that to get you out of that? 
No, I mean, the cocktails are kind of a default setting, mm-hmm. regardless of how it's, how good or badly anything is going. It seems those are a constant in my life. Uh, I mean, it's sort of, uh, I'm a big baseball fan, and I feel like it's how what they say about closers, uh, the, you know, the final relief pitcher comes on to lock down the end of the game. They say there it helps if they have a short memory. Now I do not have a short memory, but the only way that you can sort of get that confidence back is by getting up as quickly as possible after that. So every time I've done that, and like my first of two Letterman showcases before I got it, the first one I just felt like, or the first one I felt was good. The second one, actually, I was like, it was good, but not good enough. And I mm-hmm. was like so mad at myself because I thought I had like of the nine people on the show, show I was like I think I had the second or third best set and that's not good enough and I just like wanted to get on stage immediately again to be like no fuck it I can I can do better than this let me do that now so I mean it's it's sort of like I don't know if it's good or bad but like just getting getting back on stage as quickly as possible you know to get to make the last feeling you had good you know yeah right yeah it it just tastes you sort of rinse that taste out of your mouth you know what I mean yeah. yeah. Do you have a do you have a go to move? Unfortunately, my move is when I'm in New York, when I'm in the city, if I have a bad show, I usually get on a subway and I go, all right, well, I guess I should probably start packing things, you know, like <laughs> right. I, I'll never forget, like for about for about a minute or two. I'm like, why am I even I, I just hate everything. Like, I'm like, why am I waiting for a train? It takes 20 I hate this, like. You know, oh, the why, late at night when right. it doesn't come. Yeah. Yeah. I once had a, I bombed very early on after moving here. I did very bad on a show. And, you know, you feel like when I moved here, I'd been doing comedy for a little while and you work the road. You're like, I'm a good comic. And then you come here and like, you just have something you're trying to prove yourself and it doesn't go well. And I remember getting on the train to come back to Astoria and I was on the wrong train going in the opposite direction. And I texted my roommate at the time who was also from pittsburgh and i said i'm moving out of new york uh (laughs) tomorrow like i was so adamant i was so upset um but my thing is like i feel like if i have a good show or a bad show the celebration or the grieving is the same it's usually like something like something from the club's kitchen you know what i mean like to take (laughs) back to the hotel room and you know maybe a couple drinks um and it's just like it's just the mood uh, that i'm in is different yeah i I think you know i think that i think that's good i and i I mean i think that's very similar to what i do too like i'll like me sitting in a hotel bed with some with uh, a chicken product from or a cheeseburger from the the club itself and then watching a weirdly old wwe pay-per-view in my bed is like I mean that that has happened in great times and awful, you know. In right. The same yeah. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's just like the clouds that's around you. What? What? What is the feeling of it? Yeah. You know? Yes. Totally. What? What do you think? You know, this is this is gonna take a second if you need it. What do you sure. think? Sort of pound for pound, we could it could be venue setup, the set, how far you had to go, the money mm-hmm. you were paid, worst show you've ever done. Oh, that's, that's, that's very good. As far as, yeah. Uh, I, one contender certainly is uh, at the Comedy Caravan in Louisville. Oh, I, familiar. yeah, all right. And uh, it's, it's gone through some different eras. I, w- messaged them about doing feature work. And this was like, before I'd only featured, I've, I've done, featured one-nighters basically but I was uh someone said they you know vouched for me at that club whatever and the guy who was running it at the time said you know we uh, well we'd have to see you in person first I was living in New York so like Louisville is where this club is and it's not Mm -hmm. on the way really anywhere I was like all right sometime I'm like I'll borrow my mom's car from Chicago and then drive six hours or whatever to Louisville and do a free unpaid guest spot for five minutes here so I did that and with the not the promise but just the possibility of getting I don't know five hundred dollars at some point in the future right so I did this and there's just everybody there's just like a million people showcasing the show's like two or three hours long it's on a Wednesday and I'm like all right well I'm over here like I'm in the other room because the main room was I guess packed 
and uh, someone came running out and said, where's Kevin? And they had just like said, Kevin McCaffrey, no one told me that I would, no one, no one had introduced themselves, told me I was up next. So they said my name and it was just like dead silence in there. Also the act who went before me was a guy, uh, like a rodeo guy doing rope tricks, like no jokes. He was doing shit with a rope. And then I had to go on and follow it. And uh, two college friends of mine were there. Uh, so I think like in terms of getting paid nothing, hours, who I followed and the fact that they didn't tell me when I was going to be up, but announced me anyway, uh, that's off the top of my head, first contender. And then very quickly, uh, first feature night I ever did, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Buffalo Wing Bar. It was during, I believe, game six of the Lakers-Celtics NBA Finals. Everyone was watching on the stage with the big screen. And when it was comedy time, game's not over, they like comically pulled the screen and it did the like whap 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 like like unf like furling at the top and everyone was pissed and then we had to go do a uh, stand up there oh my god i mean the first of all the idea of a 2 to 3 hour show is yeah. so egregious like uh, what what do you yes. what do you think 90 minutes tops what is your perfect time yeah it's a yeah 90 it 90 is a good solid and if it's a couple minutes under that's great too yeah but like yeah you any any time past 90 it should not be longer than like a if a, a solid 80s comedy movie i mean like it shouldn't be over it shouldn't be longer than any movie <laughs> basically right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, if it's all the worst people, like having three, like two to three hours of like open mic and rope tricks is not where, I mean, I don't want to watch even remember when like Chappelle and Dane Cook were doing that pissing contest about like uh, just trying to go as long as they possibly can because, you know, comedy is about quantity. Uh, they like, I don't want to watch Dave Chappelle in his prime for three hours and he doesn't do any rope tricks, you know? Right. It, it is that's a great point that these these crazy showcases that clubs make you go through to to audition you're trying mm -hmm. to do your best and you are surround it's like a dinner for schmucks scenario where it's <laughs> like you're the yeah. only person who's saying there and then they go well why didn't it go well because you had 45 <laughs> to 50 minutes of of insane like people talking about QAnon and the yeah. illuminati and dating in front of me and then you know, there was still another hour of the show to go. Like it's not going well for anybody. They, oh, and they it's, don't yeah. put you in a in a opportunity to succeed. You know, no, and it's it's sort of a uh, it, it's the yin to the yang of the best of the the best experience I, I had that you mentioned. Where it's like on Letterman, you go up and it's like you could be nervous about it, but it, Dave has vouched for you. Dave right. says the very funny your name, so you're getting a pause breaks on setups and shit. This is the opposite, where you have all these people go before you. The crowd has no trust in anything they'll ever see here, and actually, the fact that you're here makes them like you less now because they're right. like you're one of these jabronis who are just going up like uh, just a bunch of like bad clowns, basically. Right. Yes, that's what it is. It, in that sense, it is just a bunch of horrible clowns yes. that all seem bad at their jobs uh -huh. um, you post great stuff on instagram uh you, you do i love like your crowd work stuff and your, your you know when you riff and your interactions worst heckle you've received as a comic this is very new oh. and this is a little off the board because yeah. it uh a a different comedian just DM'd me that he was on stage and my aunt was super drunk, heckled him and said she didn't like me. So this is off the board because I was not there, but one of my aunts and I have 11, so I won't say which one it is, but one of them was wasted and repeatedly interrupting a comedian. We, uh, we might both know, I don't know if you know Kunal Aurora, but uh, yes. Okay, so you can ask him about my aunt uh, <laughs> who interrupted, fucked up his show and said she she wasn't impressed by me. So I was heckled in a place by my family where I was not, uh, is in some sense, the worst heckle I've ever gotten, I suppose. <laughs> so, Buddy, that might take the cake. It's up I mean, there. 
I've heard people get violent. I've seen people get uh -huh. upset, storm the stage, you know, whatever. I got death threats after one that was posted, the one that blew up the biggest on TikTok I got from one very, for one specific person, but yeah. You got, you received death threats? Yeah, multiple by uh, two different Facebook accounts. And then I had to do a police report. And you know what the police do when you file a, uh, a death threat report is uh, nothing. So uh, they just, they tell you, yeah, this is a jailable offense and someone will be in touch. And then uh, that was uh, four or five months ago but uh yeah so someone being like i see your schedule i'll see you soon you know uh <laughs> you know it, what yeah. is so fun though about this is when you when i talk to you the calmness the demeanor the sort of the the unaffectedness that you speak of these things is so telling <laughs> of just years and years of of cutting off tiny little pieces of yourself you know, sure you, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah cutting off you, the edges stuffing them inside yeah right. you spoke about doing letterman with the same tone and calmness <laughs> as you spoke about someone going i'm going to come to one of your shows and kill you yeah and i love that i you don't get <laughs> Thank that you. Much, yeah, you know? yeah you really no. don't. Uh, yeah uh, it's it's a uh, yeah it's a nice biz um Kevin, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Tell people where they can find you and where they can see you online and where they can see you live even. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Fun to fun stuff to talk about. Uh, truly, which sounds, some of that might sound, yeah. sound sarcastic, but no, I, it actually is fun. Um, you, you can find me at Kevin McCaff on Instagram. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all the things, just at Kevin McCaff. And uh, yeah, a bunch of, bunch of wood stuff coming up. I don't know when this is dropping, but I'm in St. Louis, April 7th to the 10th at the Funny Bone Westport. I'm a Wichita Looney Bin, April 14th to the 16th, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, end of the month. I'm in Vegas and, uh, in June at the Tropicana for a week and, uh, you know, in LA after that. But yeah, just at Kevin McCaff, follow me on, on those things. Right on. Well, thank you so much for doing this, buddy. Thanks for having me, Colin.